Welcome to this tutorial on the BIME A gyro from Radiolink. This part of the video relates to the version 1.0 BIME A gyro from Radiolink. A version 2 BIME A gyro from Radiolink has now been released and information relating to this version of the gyro is in the later part of this video. This is what you'll receive in the packet. A handy card that contains links to the manuals for both the gyro BIME A and BIME D. The BIME A is for standard four channel planes and the BIME D is for delta wing planes that have elevons. On the card there is also after sales contact information which is very useful. You get a sticky pad for installing it into your plane, a servo connection lead, and the gyro itself. This is the gyro itself, and it is actually very small, as you can see. It has five connections on the end here in standard servo format with three connecting pins, and then it has a button on the right hand side here for reversing the channels and as it states here the input is 6 volts it will run off 5 volts as well so the input here in terms of the S bus or PPM is the top one and then you've got four channels here for the outputs from the gyro and they have to be in the correct order so channel 1 has to be ailerons channel 2 has to be elevator, channel 3 is throttle and channel 4 is a rudder. When you're mounting the gyro in the plane it has to be mounted with the front of the gyro facing the nose of the aircraft and there's an arrow here hopefully you can see an arrow that is there which shows that that has to be pointing towards the front of the aircraft and it can either be mounted like this or it can be mounted like this. You can't mount it on the side like this. It will automatically determine which way up it is, whether it is this way up or whether it is this way up. I will throw a picture up on the screen now showing a larger sized view of the gyro so that you can see the connections on the input and for the output. This is the radio that I'm using. It's a jumper T-Lite running OpenTX, but almost any radio will work. So I've set up the model here as a standard four channel model. As I mentioned before, the ailerons have to be on channel one, elevator on two, throttle on three, and rudder on four. And then for the controls for the gyro, you have channels 5 and 7 set up as is stated in the manual. I will put an image on the screen now to show you the modes and the signals on the different channels when the different modes are activated. Here is how it is on this radio. So I've got these two switches here set for the different modes. This is a two position switch here and this is a three position switch here. So at the moment it's in manual mode. If I move it here, gyro mode. it goes to gyro mode and then stabilized mode. Stabilized mode is there. Gyro mode. Manual mode. Fully down is manual mode. With the two position switch moved up, manual mode. It's still in manual mode. But then when I move this switch, acro mode. We get acro mode and then vertical mode when the switch is fully up. There is a potential gotcha in the manual with regard to the throttle channel. In the manual it says you should reverse the throttle channel. That is incorrect unless you are using a radio link radio. 
all other types of radio already have the throttle channel reversed. So you should not do that. And in fact, if you do reverse the channel, it could result in a very dangerous situation where the motors will spin when you think they are off. I will now demonstrate how to do the initial attitude calibration of the gyro. When you have the radio set up with all the defaults, what you will find is that you probably need to calibrate the gyro by using this stick movement. So the left stick down and to the left and the right stick up and to the right, which is actually not what it says in the manual. In the manual it says you should pull the sticks down like this. So the left stick to the down and the left, the right stick to the down and the right. Now on my radio, uh, I do actually need to use the calibration method as stated in the manual because I have reversed the elevator channel on here so that I get the correct movement of the elevator when I move the stick on the radio. That therefore means that the calibration method as stated in the manual is correct for this radio. If your channels are at their default values, you will probably find that in fact you need to do that for your calibration because this will not work. So we will power on. The gyro has initialized and to do the calibration what you should do is have the gyro with a little bit of an up angle on it have the radio set to manual mode because you don't want any movement to affect the calibration. This one, because of the way it's sitting here, does have a slight up tilt to it, which is fine. It doesn't need 20 degrees, like it says in the manual. That's just for the plane that is referred to in the manual. For most other planes, probably about 5 degrees up tilt is more than adequate. So what you need to do with it being in manual mode is hold the sticks down and out. As you can see, the gyro has flashed, the motors have spun, and that is the initial calibration done. Once you have completed the initial gyro calibration, you must move to servo phase adjustment otherwise known as channel reversing. The reason you have to do this is so that the gyro output causes the control surfaces to move in the correct direction. Failure to do this could result in your aircraft crashing. I will put an image on the screen now to demonstrate how this works. In practical terms, what it means is pressing this button on the front of the gyro the appropriate number of times so that a particular channel is reversed. I will demonstrate this on this aircraft now. After having powered on the gyro, you will see that it is initialized and we have two lights on. If I put the aircraft into gyro mode, stabilized mode, stabilized mode and I now move the gyro, you will see that the control surfaces are moving. If I tilt the gyro to the right, what you will see is the right-hand aileron goes up and the left-hand aileron goes down. Unfortunately, what this will do is result in the aircraft spiralling and crashing. Because if I moved the gyro to the right, what should happen is the right-hand aileron moves down and the left-hand aileron moves up to compensate. So I need to reverse the first channel, and I do that by pressing the button once. Which I've now done, and the light has come on. Now if I move the gyro to the right, you will see the right hand aileron goes down and the left one goes up, which is correct, and will stabilise the aircraft. A quick note regarding 
location for the gyro within the plane, it should be located as near as possible to the center of gravity of the aircraft. This will ensure the best response of the gyro to aircraft movement. Radiolink have released an updated version 2 of the BIM A gyro. This retains the same form factor and connections as the original version 1 gyro. There's a picture on the screen now showing the two of them. It is distinguished from the version 1 gyro by the sticker on the front. There is a new feature within the version 2 gyro of having two vertical modes. More of that in a moment. There is also an updated instruction manual and it is very important to follow the details in the instruction manual because the channel values for the modes are different than they are with version 1 gyro. The manual also addresses the point about throttle reversing and attitude calibration stick positions. As noted previously, the version 2 BIMA gyro has two vertical modes. These are multi-rotor vertical mode and fixed wing vertical mode. The multi-rotor vertical mode is the same as the vertical mode found in the version 1 BIMA gyro. Multi-rotor vertical mode makes the aircraft behave as if it were multi-rotor aircraft or a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Fixed wing vertical mode makes the aircraft behave as if it were a 3D aircraft. I will demonstrate how the two modes work by using this model. In multi-rotor vertical mode, elevator input causes the aircraft to move forward or backward. Aileron input causes the aircraft to move left or right, and rudder input causes the aircraft to rotate around its axis. In fixed wing vertical mode, elevator input causes the aircraft to move forward or backwards, rudder input causes the aircraft to move left or right, and aileron input causes the aircraft to rotate around its axis. Here is some flight footage using the BIM A gyro. It is fitted in an Atom RC flying fish plane. I am using an 850 mAh 3S GNB battery. I hope you enjoy the flight. We're here at the field with the Atom RC flying fish plane and I've got the T light transmitter. Everything's bound up and set to go. I'm just going to demonstrate the modes on the plane. At the moment, we're in manual mode, so when I move it around, nothing happens. If we change it to gyro mode, you'll see that it responds. Hopefully, you can hear the servos moving there. Responds to movement. If we put it into stabilized mode, then what you can see is the surfaces here will actually stay to self-level the plane so it's back to level this way and then for the elevator nose down it obviously tries to pull the plane back up and again for that so that all seems to work okay I'm gonna launch it in stabilized mode uh, we've got rates on medium to start with and we'll see how it goes hopefully it will be fine so here we go with the maiden And there we are. Flying nicely. It's quite a small model, so we'll try and keep it fairly close just to show it flying. But that's it in stabilized mode. I'm going to now get a little bit of altitude and then switch it into gyro mode. Gyro. 
and I will get more control at that. It seems to be fairly well trimmed out. Doesn't look like it needs a lot of trimming. Bring it down a little bit lower. It flies quite nicely. Let's see if we can do a roll. Yeah, I'll do a roll, see if we can do a loop. Plenty of power. Basically, it'll just go straight up if you want it to. That got small very quickly. But it'll also just go around quite nice and slowly as well. Put it back in the stabilized mode, you see it all automatically leveled the plane. And now that's flying hands free. And the gyro is doing its job. Thank you for watching this tutorial on the installation and setup of the Vime A Gyro from Radiolink. If you have any questions about using the Gyro, please contact After Sales Service at Radiolink.